Hi Year 7, I hope you're all well. Uh, welcome to Lesson 8 of Coast. I've done the same as last week, so there is a document on Show My Homework, um, a worksheet for you to follow along with the lesson, creating your own notes and creating diagrams, and then also completing the task at the end. Um, so you can either print that off and complete it by hand, or you can um, use the Word document and complete it on the computer, or you can just follow along on a piece of paper. Um, however you want to do it, that's fine. So we're going to have a look today at depositional um, landforms. So we're going to explore how the seed deposits and drops material. So first of all, just a quick reminder of longshore drift. Um, longshore drift links with depositional landforms. The formation of depositional landforms is usually because of the process of longshore drift. So the waves approach the beach at 45 degree angle, so that's swash. So as the wave breaks, the swash carries the material up the beach. And then the backwash is at a 90 degree angle to the beach and that will take material away because of gravity. So this means that material is transported along the beach in this zigzag route, which you can see on the diagram. So remembering constructive and destructive waves, beaches are a depositional landform. They're formed because of constructive waves. So constructive waves help to build up beaches because the swash is strong, so that had is able to carry material in it, the wave's able to carry material in it, but the backwash is weak, so the sand and the pebbles and the materials left behind on the beach. Um, materials transported along the beach by longshore drift and it's then deposited. The coarse material is left at the top of the beach. Coarse material is just a um, larger material that's left at the top of the beach. It might be too heavy for um, backwash to move it, so the backwash might be powerful enough to move that larger material. Beaches are main, mainly made up of sand, shingle and pebbles, and that material might have come from um, erosion off a cliff or from another beach. Okay, so the main landform we're gonna have a look at today is a spit, and that also links in nicely with two other landforms that we'll briefly talk about and have a look at. Um, but a spit is caused by deposition and they're a feature formed by the process of longshore drift. So you can see here on the diagram, there's longshore drift. So a spit is an extended stretch of beach material that only joins the mainland at one end. So you can see here the mainland's here, but there's nothing at this end of the spit. And they start to form when there's a change in direction of the coastline. So you can hear, see here this um, change in direction of the coastline along the headland. Whereas the longshore drift doesn't really follow this change in direction, it carries on going in a straight line and um, depositing material um, and creating this spit. So I've got a diagram here. So you can copy this out or you can try and find your own on the internet. Um, and then you can annotate it. You can either Annotate it as we go along, or you can challenge yourself and try and annotate it afterwards from memory. So, the first thing is longshore drift transports material along the coastline, which you can see here in this zigzag movement. So, you've got the swash at a 45 degree angle, um, carrying material up the beach, and then the backwash at a 90 degree angle from the beach, taking material off the beach. And that just moves along the coastline. Um, through the process of longshore drift, you can see the direction through the arrow. Then what happens is there's a change in direction of the coastline. So here you've got the headland sort of curving round. Um, and the spit starts to form where there is shallow and sheltered water. So you can see here the bay um, usually has shallow and sh more sheltered water. So what happens is longshore drift doesn't follow this changing shape of the coastline. It carries on in a straight line and starts depositing material where there is um, shallower water and sheltered water um, because the waves won't have as much energy here to carry the material. So deposition occurs resulting in the buildup of sand. Um, so a spit's made up of beach-like material and the material deposited first will be the largest material. Um, that's because the largest material require more energy from the waves um, to transport and therefore the waves will just drop it when there's shallower water because there's less energy. So here's just some more examples and some more diagrams um, explaining spit formation. So you can see here there's a change in shape of the coastline. Longshore drift will be going in this direction. 
and the prevailing wind will be going in this direction. So longshore drift will be zigzagging the material along the coastline. And then you've got sheltered, probably shallower water here. And then longshore drift will start depositing material along the spit because it'll lose energy. And it doesn't follow the change in shape of the coastline. It sort of carries on in a straight line. Okay. Okay, so here's another one. What you get behind a spit is salt marshes and that's because there won't be much water movement here. So the water, um, the spit shelters the water from waves and therefore there won't be much movement of water. So start mar salt marshes or mud flats start to form here behind a spit. And spits quite often do form along a river estuary. Um, so where the river comes out to the sea. This diagram is quite nice. It shows how salt marshes form and why they form. So waves can't get past the spit and it creates a sheltered area where this um, silt is deposited. So mud flats or salt marshes form. So there won't be much movement of water there. Um, over time, the spit grows and it will develop this sort of hook, like you can see it here more. And that's because um, of a changing direction of the wind. It starts to create this hook-like um, shape at the end of a spit. Okay, so here there's just two um, videos and clips for you to watch that will just help with your understanding of the formation of a spit. And also they give some really good examples of um, spit formation in the UK especially. Okay, I said before that spits um, lead to the formation of two other depositional landforms. So the first one is a bar. So a bar forms when a spit joins um, another part of the mainland. So remembering that a spit is when it's attached to one part of the mainland and then it's just curved hook at the other end. Um, a bar forms when it forms across and joins another part of the mainland. So here you've got a lagoon or a bay um, and this longshore drift has carried beach material all the way across the um, bay to join the other side of the mainland. And a tombolo is when a spit joins an island from the mainland. So here you can see the direction of onshore drift. So the spit would sort of end here. But then there's this island that's quite close to the mainland that's now joined the mainland by this beach material. That's called a tombolo. So you've got the change in shape of the headland forming a spit, but then this island jo is joined to the spit forming this tombolo. So the island's joined to the mainland now by this sort of beach material. So they're just two other depositional landforms that form um, because of the formation of a spit. So there's an example of bar and there's an example of tombolo joining, a spit joining an island forming it, this tombolo. So what we need to do now is to use the keywords in the box that are also on your worksheet explain how longshore drift creates a spit. So what you could do is try and challenge yourself and try not to look at your notes or your diagrams um, and just use the keywords to explain how the longshore drift creates a spit. You could even draw a diagram from memory to try and help with your explanation. Okay, don't forget to upload your work to show my homework and thank you for watching.